Do you feel constrained, you know, if you are giving out the right messages? Does it sometimes make it harder, you know, do, do, do barriers get in your way? You know, did the media maybe shut you down and oh, definitely. You know, not no. listen to what you have to say? Well, definitely. I mean, well, the first thing that the media likes to do, especially the right wing media, is to try to either discredit you, um, you know, to the point to where everything that you say after that becomes obsolete. Mm. You know, they, they want to maybe discredit, discredit you, maybe um, make you a villain, you know, um, maybe tear down what you say or just criticize you just to the point where, you know, everything you say after that yeah. is, is, you know, meaningless. So yeah. you'll see those kind of tactics, whether it's on Fox News or Bill O'Reilly or Sean Hannity. Yeah. Yeah, but, um, you know, you just have to really know that that type of criticism is going to come, especially if, you, you know, like I spoke out in the, one of the biggest anti-war rallies, you know, here in D.C. last year. That, yeah. yeah, and, um, you know, I, I was... Um, inundated with mountains of criticism. Really? Yeah, and then mountains of praise as well. Yeah. So, you know, so it kind of works hand in hand, but you should see some of the mail that I got. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm like, really? You feel that? <laughs> yeah. I didn't you know, know it was that big of a deal. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. saying, but you know, um, I mean, that's just the thing when, when somebody speaks out as strongly, because I have strong feelings about certain topics. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm not afraid to put them out there. And, you know, people can disagree with me. I have no problem with you disagree with me, disagreeing with me, but you know, you still have to, you know, respect me as a man. Respect that I can have that opinion. You, you just have to be able to have the conviction and the moral courage to be able to stand up for what you believe in. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I really, you know, loved about you know Muhammad Ali or some of the players in the past. Is yeah. you know they were, they were in the face of you know criticism that I couldn't even imagine, and everything was you know kind of, kind of depending on. Um, them being accepted in society, and they yeah. still stood up for what they believed. And it was it was a different time. You yeah. know what I mean, it was much yeah. harder to stand up in the '60s than it is now. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm going to get criticized. You know, yeah, you're going to have people, you know, bash me in their newspapers. You're going to get arrested. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 completely different. Yeah. You know, so um, I have a lot of respect and always pay homage to the you know the guys of the past that you know spoke out. Yeah. You know, and as far as you know dealing with Mia, I mean this, I mean I. I can't, I can't stop speaking about how much I'm against the death penalty. Some people say he shouldn't be a symbol, some people say he should be and it's not fair on other people. But I think more than anything, once you start looking into his case, it definitely opens up yeah. your eyes and you, right. you look on. You know, right. I met a lot of people who he was there first, the right. person, right. and then they've looked into the wider issues. Definitely, definitely. I mean, you have to, you know, and I could, I could speak for me personally, it really, really uh, opened my eyes mm. to a lot of the particulars, you know, especially the particular problems dealing with the death penalty. You know, I'm against it. You know, overall. Yeah. You know, and I, and, and it's and it's interesting because I mean, I'm I'm a Christian, and um, as a Christian, um, you know, it, God made it very clear that it's His place to judge. Yes. You know what I mean? And He said, "Vengeance is 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 mine." Mm. You know, it's not yours; it's mine. I mean, and all these different things, but you always hear the right use Christianity to 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 kind of justify their positions on other things, but, yeah. you know, death penalty, they just say, well, we just believe that that's the way that it's supposed to be. You know, now you're starting to see more Republicans come out against Bush and say, yeah. you know what, maybe this wasn't such a good idea. Sure, like, yeah, really? You're, you're just now <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. realizing that we're this wasn't a good idea? Ago, yeah. yeah. So, so um, I mean, where did your political beliefs first grow out of? I mean, your, your, your religion was part of it, but, you know. What? Yeah, my um, religion, but when I, when I was younger, I'd say around middle school, um, that's when I first started getting really into my culture and my heritage. Um, I started uh, reading a lot. You know, I read an autobiography of Malcolm X. I um, remember in seventh grade. Um, took it right out of my mom's um, library in the house. And so your mom was quite political. Yeah, so. definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah, a lot of a lot it's of like stuff. Mine. <laughs> yeah, a lot of stuff I'm, I get from my mom. You know, yeah. the books that I was reading, and she was into poetry, so she would be, you know, playing Gil Scott Heron or the Last Poets, or you know, around the house, and I, you know, listen to it, and mm. you know, just start writing some of my own later on, and you know, that's really what formed. You know, it really opened my eyes. Was you know the first time I picked up the autobiography of Malcolm X. When did and, you first start writing poetry, by the way? Um, well, I started off writing speeches because yeah. I wanted to write on uh, like you know topics like Malcolm wrote and you yeah. know talk about controversial things and point out different things that are wrong in society. Mm. You know, like my, so I, I started off writing okay. speeches, and then um, you know as I got a little older, I started to start to write poetry because I started reading about Langston Hughes and reading about County Cullen and. You know, um, then in uh, high school, I got into speech and debate. Yeah. And uh, so it just kind of, just yeah. kind of kept going. Blessing from there. Yeah, yeah, it just kind of blessing. So I mean, do you feel that, like you know, in in modern American society, I mean, coming over from England, it seems that it must be very hard, 
you know, going against the mainstream, I mean, a lot of, you know, sports stars and, and you know, people in entertainment sort of got to be on cribs and, mm -hmm. you know, show off their cars and mm -hmm. what they own and sort mm -hmm. of how they've gotten out of their situation mm -hmm. and where they've gotten to. I mean, do you think that's probably what's wrong? You know, do you think that's, that's you know, obviously, you'd think it's the wrong message to give. But, yeah, you know. Well, definitely. I mean, because those things don't mean anything. Mm. I mean, I, you know, I hear all the time when I go to places and they were like, you know, little kids were asking, you know, why you don't have any jewelry on? Yeah. Like, I don't need any jewelry. Yeah, what do you mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Or they're, they're asking me something about, you know. Yeah, what size of the rims? Yeah, the car, something like yeah. that. And, you know, like, I'm like, no. And that's when I just start talking to them. And they're like, really? You know, and, and I can use the position because they see me and they really listen and hone in on everything yeah. that I say. And, yeah. you know, all the time when I speak to school, the teachers are like, oh, I, we wish we could get them to listen to us like they just listen to yeah. me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so yeah. I just really echo the same things that they're saying to them, yeah. you know, just from a different perspective. Yeah. You know, it's from because I remember growing up and I remember, you know, when uh, different players came and talked to me, you know, talked talk to you know, middle school and high school. You know, I remember. Mm. You know what I mean? And you listen. That's, that's just yeah. the way it is. Yeah. You, you listen to somebody you identify with, yeah. and somebody you admire and look up to, and that you've you know, seen on TV, and you just listen. Yeah. And um, so I just try to be a positive light as much as I can. You know, that's, that's one side of the poetry. The other side is the political side. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where I, I, I want to speak out on different issues, and I'm, I'm, I'm opinionated. You yeah. know, and I love, you know, sometimes when I'm in, in different uh, places, we'll have a debate. I was just in a charter school. Um, a little while ago, and they asked me about my poem, The Penalty of Death. Yeah. And then um, I said, well, what do you think about the death penalty? So then he said, well, you know, do you think that somebody that made, did a heinous crime sometimes deserves it? And then all these hands are going up. And yeah. then it was this big dialogue, yeah. and it was great. I was like, Fantastic. this is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they're thinking. You don't have to necessarily agree with me, but I just love the, uh, hearing young people, people think. It, yeah. 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 And young people think. I love it. Does it make you feel optimistic working with kids? Oh, definitely. That's what makes me feel optimistic, yeah. working with kids. If it was just for adults, I'd be like, oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but working with kids makes me feel optimistic because they, they, they have a thirst for knowledge, and a lot of them know a lot more than, you know, people think that they know. Mm. You know, and that's why one of the things I fight for, you know, the, you know, the, the inner city school problem, you mm. know what I mean? Because the schools aren't equal. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I see the, the kids, and I see how, you know, they, these kids want to learn. You know, of course you have bad seeds in, in, in every bunch, but, you know, these kids want to learn, and, it's and you know, it's not fair. I mean, we had a clan marched in, marched to, no, no, to, to um, downtown. Um, you know, I guess it's one of the places that he goes. He loves going over to clean New York. But yeah. I was, I was what was that there. like? What's Tulsa like? Um, it was different. Different. In Must New have York. been a strange. Pretty segregated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> I was yeah, like, exactly. this is just like yeah. down south. I know. I, know. <laughs> you know I mean? lived in Brooklyn like last year, and oh, it's amazing. Like you go across like, one street. Oh, it's amazing. You know, you go it's across past past. Yeah, that's no man. Come, oh, man. come, come, come be up with you. Yeah. The um, we we met up with Sonia Sanchez as well, and she, oh, you know, yeah.